Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome to days five and six of the Alteryx 30 day core challenge. Sorry, there's gonna be some sounds coming from my phone. I'm actually drafting my fantasy football team as I'm recording this. Just a recap what we've done already. We did the getting started portion of the getting started learning path. And so that originally scheduled for days three through six, I realized as I was midstream that it was only going to take about two days to get it done. Well, same thing has happened. So now what we have days five and six, hold on, I'm going to make some picks here. Hmm. Take Brandon Ayuk, sure. Trevor Lawrence, all right. Cool. So my fantasy team is definitely going down in flames. I did no preparation for this draft. Those of you that share my particular sickness of fantasy football, you know what it's like to draft day comes and you, you haven't done any prep. So I don't recommend that for work. I'm definitely prepared for work tomorrow. Just wasn't real prepared for this uh, draft in a football team. But it's much more fun when you just let it fly. So back to what I was saying. We did days three and four. There were no real prac apps at the end of that. It was kind of a kind of a dull grind, that one. This one is going to be very different. So today we're doing days. Um, I realize that it's only going to take us two days to get through what we're going to sort out today. So this video is going to air on Tuesday. And days five and six were corresponding with the dates. So days five and six are the 5th and 6th of September, Tuesday and Wednesday. And it's only going to take us two days to get through this material. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tack on a weekly challenge. Days five and six, Tuesday and Wednesday, Thursday, I will schedule a YouTube live session where I will work through a fairly basic weekly challenge. I, of course, I have two desks now. I have this one here that is set up for actual recording, which is cool. I have my work desk, which is in my office. This is the, the kids' game room. And uh, so my list of weekly challenges is down there. I will put out what that weekly challenge is going to be, and I will put out an advertisement to see people at the live session questions and hopefully working through the weekly challenge with me. The cool thing that we're going to see today, we're going to go through data preparation. I'm not going to sit here and I don't need to already. Um, how and then what we're going to do segment in this, you're going to see throughout the rest of it, and it's called Try It. Try It is a very tool workflow, if you remember that. It's just going to show you different configurations of things. And so you can hook up the tool to a run some different different things to the tool. At the end period, there is a practice, a challenge. And so we work through this on Tuesday and Wednesday, and then Thursday, uh, I'll do a time evening that we can do a live session. Work through with me. You can fire your question. All right. So without further ado, let's kick into it. Let me bring up the screen. This is the basic data prep portion. Oh, look, it is my pick. Who should I take? Let's just go far. Christian Kirk. Brian Robinson. Not really anything now, but defense, special teams, and a kicker. All right. So we've got this here, Intro to Data Analytics. And this is going to be the video. And this is going to what's going to take up a fair bit of time. It looks like if you go into it, sorry for the glow on my face here. If you get into it, you can see it estimates it at 26 minutes. We'll round it up. 30 minutes is what it's probably going to take. And you can see there's a lot of different segments and videos here. 
some of the why that we're here and overviews of analyze actual um, you can combine data sets vertically which is called okay so i won't believe for you with that it's got a lot of basics like what altering that what is pivoting what is summarizing parsing so it's going to introduce to a lot of the concepts that are going on going forward all right so just estimate 30 minutes for that and it's, it's watching a lot of videos there are some um i don't think there are any interactive portions here i think it's a lot of kind of watching videos i urge you to take a couple of uh but you know do, you do you so that is the intro to data analytics then you can see the menu options. Don't worry about which one you're going to go over four tools. Most basic tools of the most basic tools of the integration palette. You can see the grayed out here. But the, the, they're the blue circles. That and so these are super basic and different functions in Excel, filtering rows based on criteria, sending or descending up or down, and are going to kind of be your red initial cleaning the load, exploratory get into those. I need sort of thing. And so let's get into this and we'll just interact the lesson when you click into this, it's going to be some more videos. These are all like five to seven minutes. Just bring one up here. I'll just show you this example and then we'll we'll go on. With this, all right, sign interactive things and some of them will have kind of a little check on learning at the end of it so all pretty brief five to seven minutes easy day so other 20 to 30 minutes now that's another half hour or so because this try is really where you're going to make your money you click on the try it and it's going to download a zip file. The standard Alteryx workflow, the, the document suffix, a YXZP inputs and outputs. So go ahead and open that. It's going to take you through, it's going to take you through a couple of steps. Do you want to import it? Yes, I do. Yes, I want it. Yes, I still want to import it. Pretty please with sugar on top. Would you do you want to load the workflow? Yes, I do. Not sure why you keep asking me these things. And we're in business. Okay. Get my, my mini K bar out of it. If you wanna this is mainly just a key from there on the side of my face as I'm working with you. Work mode yourself. You go to options, user settings, edit you, which is customization. And I'm going to stay in dark mode, just, and I need all the help I can. So let's figure out the select tool, edit workflow, and it's going to give you instructions in each box. And in every big pane, a little bit, let's open up oop, oop, didn't mean to do that let's open up the results pane just to tab perfection a little more there we go all right let me zoom in just a bit so it says First instruction says data. First thing you want to do is to run the workflow. 
Oh, you can either click this wrong, or you can do the cool guy, cool gal trick, which is control R. I don't want him in all tricks. Uh, you're going to have to work with your mouth. I don't know what to tell you. But you do want to run your shift B is another good boy to work from. All right. Let's do some EDA with our data. So we've got the data input tool. And then we've got the results screen over here down at the bottom. So we can look at our little objects. We're not, we're not doing spatial stuff. Don't need to mess with that. Fields that we're looking at. So it says remove all data with the exception of address data. Look at the target. This is going to be your fields. All we want is address, city, state, zip, and zip four. That seems simple enough. So a few ways you can get tools on your canvas. First one, and it auto connects if you. And so all we want are these check mark here. Do I got zoom and enable? I don't. I do that for next time. I'm trimming up my video presentation skills every time. I think I should be good at this. It is my job. So click this top check mark here and it deselects all the fields. We're gonna see some nifty stuff to use with the select. So address, city, state, zip, and zip four, those are the only fields that we want. And that is the first and main use to the select function to select or deselect data. All right, let's just run it real quick. See if we've got something that matches our target. Okay. We have five fields, address, city, state, zip, and zip four, and that is the target. Now, order the columns so that they are an alphabet and option for that. Let's check out the options in the select tool. I want to select tool of following data input, insert after, go find your preparation palette and select. That one takes a little longer, but if you got a hard to find tool, it's sometimes useful. So it's the hint is it's in the options. Here's the options drop down up top in the config pane. Let's drop that down and we want to go alphabetical order. So let's take this sort option, sort on field name. Come on, ascending. That's going to give us alphabetical order. Now let's run the workflow again, control R. Bada bing, happy noise. Address, city, customer ID, customer name. Does it match the target? It certainly does. Address, city, flawless victory. What's next? Okay, so same data set for all of them. Add a prefix of C3 underscore to all fields. Hint, there is an option for that. Once again, let's go, um, what should we do now? Who's defense? Cowboys defense, Michael Parsons is awesome. Kicker. I don't know, Josh Myers is usually pretty reliable and we're done. Okay, no more distractions. Let's crack on. Go up to the search bar. I have totally forgotten the name of this tool, but I know that it selects something. Oh, come on, don't go slow on me. Here we go. All the tools that have select in them, you can drag it from the search bar straight down onto the canvas, just as such. All right, so we need to add a prefix. Again, it's hinting us to go into the options. So go up to the options. Let's add, add a prefix to field names. That looks amazing. And we'll only add prefix to highlighted fields. No, and I don't feel like highlighting them all. So we're going to do all fields, C3 underscore. Enter. Ooh, look at that. It's already renamed them all. That looks perfect. Let's click the run button this time. Let's throw caution to the wind. Somebody put me on a list. 
midst of um, it was really cool. I, on those lists and, and posts of meaningful people, I guess it still kind of makes me chuckle to think of myself that way. But um, I literally got about 200 connection requests today just based off of that post. That's crazy. And probably six or 700 followers. Nuts. All right. So all of our fields have come out C3 customer ID, C3 first name, C3 last name. All good. Does that match our target? Indeed. Great success. What's next? Now we've got names. It says change first name and last name to V string 100. Cool. Now we're going to do some changing some data types. So you can also go up to the tool palette and double click. And there it is. Variety of different ways to get the tool where you want. So we're changing data types. Where do we find our data type? It's all right here next to the field name. So already a V string. First name is just a regular old string. So let's change it to V string. The V stands for variable length. And it says size 100. Now with strings, you can adjust the size. Hit enter to go down one square, 100 again. With strings, you can adjust the size. They generally default to either 255 or 256, or sometimes 254 in certain circumstances. That's generally way more than you need for a string. With num numerics, you can't change them. So right here, we got byte. You can see it's grayed out, and it won't let me select that cell. Double here, eight, size, won't let me select. It's grayed out. So, But with strings, you can pick it. Just be careful you don't truncate your strings. Lines up bad. I can tell you from painful experience, you can get in some trouble with, uh, with some angle data through that. OK. And, uh, yeah, first name, last name, V string 100, select tool on it. I don't feel like putting a select tool on it because I'm fundamentally no lazy. So let's just check the metadata. Oh, they were lazy on the target. They didn't make it 100. Ooh, okay. Oh, we got to rename something else. Rename customer ID to just ID. All right, so now we're just going to manually rename. And you just click into the rename cell ID and run it again. Click off the of metadata. It's going to stay selected on metadata until you change it. It is, is named ID. Cool. So we said using the file from the last exercise. Load it. Oh, we missed one. Dang it. Missed this. Okay. Save the field configuration. So we got to go into options in order to save the field configuration. Save and load. Save the field configuration. And we're going to go into, what is this? Downloads. Let's go documents. Okay. So file name, try it field config and save it. It's a YXFT file, which is uh, which is fields. So we've saved that. Now let's see if we can go find it. We've got to pull down another select. And now we're going to load and types. There it is. Try field config YXFT. Let's bring that in. You can see it our name, the size change, and the data type change. Let's just make sure it hits. Boom, bing, happy John. And we can see strings, both size one. If you struggle with that, pretty straightforward. The trides are more or less. Let's go. Cool. So that try is complete. Let's learn how to sort. 
select with font data for select, you can reorder fields. So it is a colossal, um, you know, having to like open a space and control C or control X this column over here and control V it over here and then go delete this column. It's just, it's just a nightmare. And I know, I know Excel heads, you can get into Power Query. I mean, the numbers just don't lie. You know, there's almost a billion Excel users in the world. There's like 2 million Power Query users. It's just, for whatever reason, it's not taken off. People don't use it. So just save it. I've heard it all. Okay. Interactive lesson, five to seven minutes. I got it written down somewhere. Sort five minutes. There you go. No need to, to go into that. It's an interactive lesson. You've seen it. Let's try the sort tool. So we're just demoing here. What's my time? I always forget where it is. 21 minutes, all right. I'm going to start moving a little faster. This one's just the YXMD. I think there are um, uh, hard-coded data in this one. Oh. There you go. So just a quick note. Instead of using a an input data, which reaches out and grabs data from an external location, that data does not live in the designer. On this one, Oh, look at that. I got to put I gotta... projects for tomorrow. On this one, data does live in designer. This is hard coded into some off location. Now, what are we going to do here? We're going to have to use the sort some solutions over here. All right. We need to do not touch the select tool. Select tool is lava. We got little kids. You, you have to watch floor is lava anymore. So that's not some little kids. And I have kids or my, my so, so I've seen some floor is lava. All right, so we're going to uh, the output here. Sort the values. Okay, we're that ascending. So let's pull down the sort tool and name. Um, we have ascending. It's already set. Let's run it. These look like they're probably numerics. But you never can tell. Sometimes strings numerics, but they're actually strings. You got to check the metadata. Values ascending 1, 2, 10, 20, 100, 200. I wasn't a math arc. It's wrong. Look at you. Silly target. Just check the data type. There is string. Ninja numerics. That's weird. All right. So sort values, I guess, in string form, that's still ascending. Interesting. So sort values ascending using dictionary order. Do not touch the select tool again. Let's bring down the sort. Values ascending. Run it. This is fun. 1, 2, 10, 20. 100, 200, what's the, what that was supposed to teach us. This one is actually in proper order. Let's look at the metadata here. That's a byte there. Mm -hmm. We found a glitch. It's a byte on both. And it's not a byte on either one here. Weird. What is a byte there? Interesting. Okay. I think that's a flaw. But anyway. All right. Sort values is ending. Now we don't have a select tool screen. Values ascending. Get off the metadata here. Without the sort tool, how does it work out? Maybe this one we were supposed to not use dictionary order. Let's run it again. No dictionary order here. I probably did wrong, although it should say that. All right, there we go. Now we number two is good. Sort values ascending here, and we're good. 
this one is a little more complicated. Okay, so we're straight act a little bit more like like their numbers. Okay, so this is dictionary order. You can see it's just going to go by that first digit. So, and then the the string. So, strings that look like numbers are not really unless you use dictionary order. Okay, so our value is ascending. That's all good. All right. I believe that is descending when it comes to dates. I should have reviewed descending. We got a 50 50 shot. Force got. Good thing about tricks, you can't break your source data. So, you know, what's the worst that could happen? Most recent join date 24 uh, August. April, cool. yeah, we're good. So descending order. Descending order puts the most, the latest or most recent date at the top. A All right, sort by name ascending and date descending. Now we're getting crazy. Sort by name. Let's look at the dark. Christine Bontheus, I guess it doesn't go away. Bontheus is before Miller. Cool. So either name, first name, ascending, which is join date, descending, run it. Cool, cool. We've got Christine Bontheus first. It looks the same. Neat. Flawless figure. Let's see what the hint looks like. Solutions. Neat. Okay. So try it for the sort is dummy questions, comments, concerns. Don't give me a like. Don't give me the um, fix it. Tell me. This is what I do during class. You're split in rows, right? If you want to split columns, if you want to send a column this way and a column that way, you want to make two data streams and use a select tool to pick those. If you want to split rows, that's your filter tool. But the nice thing about it is all of your data goes somewhere. None of it is hidden. Unlike that unnamed green software that I love the batch on that hides things from you and then you leave it filtered and you turn it into a stakeholder or a client and then you look really really dumb because you're not particularly detail oriented and also excel kind of is built to screw you up sometimes all right that was the weakest rant ever but rant over i have had because excel has done terrible terrible things to me not a I've made it super awkward. Find all the stores where they run 50K. Let's just run it all. We got a lot of stuff to do. In filter, you've got the expression. And so there's a lot of things that are the then your syntax is not correct. So you need to go back and fix it. Don't try and find this syntax. And like, it's got some parallels to SQL. It's got some parallels to Python. Don't try and go find what language it is. It's not a coding language. It's just a syntax that's genetic to all tricks. So, but the main things that you'll use it in are filters and formulas. Just keep that in mind. Find all stores where generated sales were more than 150K. We have all these. Names of stores, addresses, bunch of different fields, January sales, whatever number. Let's filter. Bring down the filter tool. And this is going to be a basic filter. 
filter. Something you want to keep in mind with a filter, you got basic and you got custom with these radio buttons. Basic filter gives you one parameter to filter on. Custom filter gives you as many as you like. Just type in the expression editor. Here we're looking at January sales greater than. Now it's a numeric field, so you're going to get numeric drop down options. You can see the equal, does not equal, greater than, greater than, equal to, all that good stuff. 150,000. I really need to bring up my other keyboard here. Let's just go ahead and run it. All these things, you can put a browse tool on at the end of it if you like. There's really no need. You just click into the output. Uh, what do we have here? January 200. False. We got 11 records. All of these look like they're under 150K. Filter correct. We got two records out of the filter, and the target is agrees. Two records, Riverton and Buffalo. They sound idyllic. Should we go across or down? This is like a crossword puzzle. Let's go across. Find all stores with the January sales. We're not more than 150,000. Need them. We're just going to control C, control C over here. You got to actually click on the canvas where you want to paste it. Otherwise, it'll just come out where the other one was. So now we've got January 150,000. Let's go not more than is less than or equal to. And run it. We started with 13 rows, so we have two of the other side, so we should have 11 now, and indeed we do. 11 rows. What's our target? 11 rows. Easy day. Okay. So all I did there was just take this right here. You can either Jovi or you can right click. You can copy it right here. Control C is your hot. Designer's not actually going to call you Joey or, or make fun of you. That's just me. But you can copy it there, and then you can do some other things. Um, insert after true, insert after false, the different anchors, lots of different options there with the right click. So definitely explore that when you got the time. Let's proceed. Find all pet stores that have pet somewhere in their name. It's getting interesting now, kids. It is getting interesting. Now we're dealing with this. Let's look at name. Oof. There are the string options. Equals, does not equal, before, after, alphabetically, of course. Contains, does not contain. Oh, there we go. Contains. What? You don't have to put it in quotes. It'll do that for you. Contains. Oop, not pay. Spelling Peyton Manning there. I got football on the brain. Contains that. Fire that bad boy. We've got fins and feathers, pet shop, pet city, records in the target. Happy day. Now let's do it again. Control C. Click over here on the canvas. Control V. Now we want to find the get those terms. But we want to find the opposite, essentially. All the pet stores that don't contain pet somewhere in their name. So name is good, pet is good. Let's find the option does not contain. Started with 13, that had eight rows, so this should be five. And indeed it is. Five barn, one out. These sound like cute names. But no, my pet in them. Target says five rows. All good, halfway through. Let's filter. Final more than 150K in sales in January. Let's just take another shortcut. I suppose I could have just pasted it instead of cutting. All right. So now I'm going to show you a little life hack here with the old Ultrix designer. Here we have contains pet. Well, now two parameters. It's pet in the name and 150K in sales. We've already built this first parameter here. Click down to custom filter. It's already written for us. That hack probably saved you minimum three to five seconds. Folks, it's all about efficiency. Contains name pet, and you can see the syntax there. So the contains function with the parentheses, then the string and the target. What are we looking for? Pet, obviously, not in these little handy dandy drop down. So we, had, we need an and in the name and more than 150k so we're going to type and carefully you don't get the autofill function i always like to drop down a line 
it's just nice for clarity. And with two parameters, it's not that big a deal. But once you have 10 or 12 or, you know, 50, it can get a, to be a bit of a pain. So contains the name field contains the string pet and square bracket brings up all of your uh, all of your variables or fields in this case is what we're looking at. We go to January sales and we're going to do greater than 150,000. It's a number. So you can see it in bold. That means the syntax is correct. You don't need anything to set it up. Let's run it. Yeah, only one. I was gonna say there's only two rows that did 150k or more. So fins and feathers is correct. Flawless. Find that find the store. Just find that do not. That didn't make sense. Find stores that do not contain the word pet somewhere in the name and super lazy. Don't do work. Do the minimum amount of work possible. Just cut and paste from the left one here to the right. And let's see what we got. Contains name pet. Okay, we've got to turn this into does not contain. Don't go searching for the function. It's the same function. To negate anything in the in the expression editor, it's an exclamation point. So now that is, you can see it already popped up. Does not equal or does not contain. The name does not contain the word pet. Easy. And had more than 150K. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, so we're all set. All we had to do was add that exclamation point. Let's run. It's discovery learning for me too, folks. I didn't practice this one row. And that is the mud hut. And the mud hut is God bless the mud hut. Let's finish her out. Let's try and get these last two. Final stores have made more than 400K in the first three months of the year. Ooh, now we got to add stuff together. Mm -mm -mm. More than 400K in the first three months of the year. We're going to have to do math in our expression editor. Let's do it. January plus February plus March. Just because I'm risk averse and I'm not 100%, that's going to work. Let's put it all in parentheses and greater than 400,000. That's a decimal. That's not a greater than, you silly goose. Try it, see if it breaks. Let's say you, I have three fins and feathers, mud hut, pet land. All right, we're seven. Final stores of the first three months sold less than 25% of their yearly total. Do we have a yearly total? We do. Look at that. Okay, I was worried we we're going to have to add 12 months together, and I really didn't want to type them out because I'm fundamentally lazy. Let's take this, Control-C, and Control-V. It's an incoming connection. Yeah, no no kidding. Almost said a bad word there. YouTube would have been mad. And March. Now, less than 25% of their yearly total. So we can just get rid of this whole 400K. We can get rid of that greater than. We need a less than. Now we're going to do 0.25 times total. Let's see, it's because I'm risk averse. I've made enough math mistakes in my life. I don't need any more. Let's run it, see if it breaks. We've got a positive result. We have set pets. And the target says we do some of the pets. Cool, cool. The filter drive, folks. Questions, chat. Put them in the comments because this is not going to be live premiere, so I'll not be chatting. I'm super busy tomorrow.
All right, we're almost there. Filter tool is done. Okay, one sample is a super useful tool, especially sort and sample is a great combo. And we'll see that in some weekly challenges. What is a sample video? Sample video is about five minutes. Easy game. Let's just go to try it. This is the, the best way to teach anyway. Just like, you know, my slides aren't working. The hell with it. Let's let's just open designer giveaway. Is it fine? We've got some inputs. Yes. Yes, a million times yes. Yes, I still want to do it. No, I haven't changed my mind. All right, sample tool. We have one, two. Come on now, sample tool. Don't portray me. Only three. Cool. Super easy. Let's run the workbook. See what we're working with. Looks like US presidents. All right. So we've got 44 Washington to President Obama. We haven't, we're, we're two presidents behind now. Interesting. Okay. Oh, I cheated. I was at the target. Okay. Bring down the sample tool. And the configuration with the sample, quite a few things. It looks very simple. They're new with the sample tool. You can go further. So let's just get the right answer right off the bat. First, and they're sorted John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Nicholas, think. Oh. First, three, just note everything depends on the variable n, and you skip first three if you want the one presidents. Um, one of every five, you get one, whatever. If you want one in the actual random sample, along with about 10% of the day, and it kind of rolls that tense for each row, the real random sample here. And then first in percent of rows, you're just getting a percentage, but it's going to be the top. Then we can go group by, that's really interesting, and I think, yeah, okay, we're going to get to one of those. So here, first one for three presidents, super easy. So first, you know, give me first N, N equals three, Washington, Adams, Jefferson, easy day. Let's go again. Last five presidents. Five up to Barack Obama. Let's run. Going quick because this is a simple tool, but there's cool things you can do with it. And then select the first three presidents of each part. This could, do we have wigs? So, yeah, there's, there's all sorts of different ones. Okay, so now so we know first three, first already done this. Now we're going to group by part. And we're just going to give you answers to stakeholder questions. Because it's going to be an interesting result. Okay, we had 44 presidents. Now we have 14. First three of each party. Well, we had some wacky name party. No, no. We had we had the Federalist George in Cincinnati. God. We had Republicans and some of my history. We had the wig. The wigs were on about. Does anybody without looking at a historically savvy people in my audience? If you remember what the wig party was all about, go ahead and drop it in the comments. No Googling, no cheating. That's a sample tool. Try it. We tried it. We came, we saw, we conquered. And hit this practice exercise, and we will call it a night, folks. Have a look at the wreckage of my fantasy football team. You all will go do whatever it is you do. I mean, it's a night for me. You probably not may not be watching this at night. We'll say if you've watched the other videos, there was definitely some technical issues or some graininess. I moved up here. This is like as far away in my house from the router as you can get. 
So there's some kind of dead spot issues up here. I, the other day I purchased a Wi-Fi extender and it's right over there and the signal is on it. It is going blue blazes. So I might actually hook up, I got an ethernet cable. I might actually hook it up ethernet and just make it like unbeatable, but okay. Practice exercise one. This one's gonna look like a weekly challenge. Let's work through it together. Okay, download, YXCP. Oh, too early. Come on. Here we go. Hold on. Yes, 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 again. And yes, I think I might have downloaded it twice. Let's go to that one. I only need one copy. Thank you. This makes me slouch. I need a slightly less lazy chair than this one. It's my son's chair. Get it. Fund of transactions in the smooth the weekly sales and dollars. Into a hundred records. Let's just look at it. Transaction information, the customer ID, customer ID, cool. Transactions column re represents made over the past year. In this exercise, we want to five customers with the highest average transaction. Both windows should match the final state shows. Five fields, okay, and five rows. Make sense? Usually the first thing you wanna do is you wanna cut down your data set. Now with a hundred rows and seven fields, it's not a big deal, not, not a significant amount of data at all. When you start working with like hundreds of thousands, millions, tens of millions of rows, really, really the first thing you wanna do is cut down that data set if it's part of your task. You can do that a bunch of different ways. You can, you can cut down the size of the fields um, you can use a tool called auto field, which you got to be a little careful with, but you want to just mash that down, kind of crumple it up like a little foil ball and just get it into some more compact shapes, like crushing your aluminum cans before you recycle them. Okay. I love my metaphors. There's two things that we need to do to cut down the data set here. We need to remove two columns and we need to get only the people in the Southern region. You can do that in whatever order you want. We learned the select tool first. Let's go ahead and select and we'll remove columns. So the columns we want to remove are weekly sales and store volume, easy day. They're the last two. Do we want to rename anything? No. So we really don't need to do anything else with the select tool. But if we figure out later that we made a mistake, like I did earlier, we can come straight back to the select tool, reconfigure it. No harm, no foul. Your input data is still intact. Great thing about Alteryx. We did that. Let's go ahead and run it. Just, just admire our handiwork. Having these like two fields. Yep. Yeah, so we've got five fields now, and there are five fields in the target. So we've cut one down. The other thing we want to cut that instruction. You just want to be kind of methodical about these things. Have develop your own. If you do the Google certificate. If you do that course on Coursera, you will develop a process for data. And I think that's the best thing about that course. It's gonna give you some SQL, it's gonna give you some Tableau, some, some R, um, some Excel, but really it doesn't give you a lot of any of those. It gives you a basic grounding and an intro. The best thing it does for you is it gives you a process. And, and you need a process. You need to have something mental that you work through every time that you don't have to think about. Every time you get a data set, you want, you want to just look at it, do EDA, like run some kind of measures of central tendency, make a histogram, easy. With Alteryx, it kind of does all that for you. You just got to know where to find it. But all right, so we're filtering, right? 
region south easy basic filter region equals south I remember Mitchenberg. Brilliant stand up comedian. This is the our actions. How you don't contract like thing you would say. You know, he's doing a show. He's like, I'm in this. You kind of had to be there. So the region is the south. We have gone down from, we have gone down from, I was almost going to show you configuration, but I'll, I'll save it for later. 100 records to our. Up, which shows 32. All right. And it looks like our region is south of the other anchor. The other one is just east, north, west, all things that are not south. Cool. So now we have only the fields that we want. We have only the south region. And now we want the five customers with the highest average transactions. Now we're going to do sort sample. Sort sample is a favorite of mine because it's a powerful combo. Drop the sort tool off of that true anchor. So we're only looking at the south region and we want to sort by average transactions. Now this says transactions in year. Oh yeah, I noticed this earlier when I was going through it. It doesn't say this in the instructions, but look at your target and this says annual transactions. I knew there was something else we were supposed to do in this slide. Your target says annual transactions. doesn't say it in the instructions that I can see unless I'm having a massive brain fart. Transactions in year. Let's change it. Let's be perfect. Annual transactions. There we go. That was right, wasn't it? Yeah, annual transactions. Okay. Now your metadata is going to flow through. Oh, no, it's not. Run it again. All right, angry noise because we haven't sorted anything. Yeah, I got it. Because you weren't annual transactions, we're going to go descending because we want the big numbers up top descend. We're not going to run it again. We're just going to throw caution to the wind. What's the last thing we need? Sample. We need the top five. We're just going to assume that sort did its job. Sort be your job. We're going to go first and rows and equals five. We're not grouping by anything because the sort has done its job. Do your job, sort. The sort has done its job. Then those numbers will be descending already. If we just pick the first five, it's going to be the highest five. I have a feeling about this. Here's, yeah, I'll teach you a trick. This is something that I invented at Inspire. Here's my Inspire t-shirt from Denver two years ago when I was an attendee. I invented this at Inspire Vegas this past year. I call it the Ultrix Quick Draw. Do two hot keys in rapid succession. Matt Bratton is going to be so proud of me. The ultra quick draw is you start with your hands up. And on the count of three, you're going to drop down. You're going to do control shift B, which is going to put a browse tool on the end of that sample and control R. You can do that as fast as possible. All right. So I did this with two classes at Inspire. I had two classes where I taught Excel for or Ultrix for Excel users. And the one class loved it they did it the whole time we did it like six or seven times every time we had to run workflow it's like ultra quick draw let's go they're all like hands in the air. not all of them but you know a lot of them they really liked it the other class looked at me like i had a third eye they were like what is wrong with this dude still got good reviews for the class but man they were not playing with the quick draw i think that was the second day and they'd been out drinking the night before i don't know all right. i want to disparage my students and inspire but okay ultrix quick draw we're going to do it together so put your hands in the air i'll just imagine I'll, I'll imagine a world in which everybody watching this video which is literally going to be tens of people everybody watching this video is actually doing these exercises which is literally going to be like one. you're all going to do the ultrix quick count of three control shift b control r two three control shift b control r all right, so you see the browse tool popped up. Um, the browse tool popped up. Happy noise, I didn't even hear it. I was talking so much. Browse tool popped up right here on Control Shift B. Control R ran the workflow. Ultrix quick draw. Congratulations. If you even attempted it, my hat's off to you.
Thank you for making me feel better about the silly things I make up to teach classes. What do we have here? We have five fields. We have five rows. These look like the highest numbers of transactions. 150, 100, 86, 50, 50. Final state says correct. And that's how it's done. All right. So from here, what you want to do is let's go ahead and save it. You want to save it with your inputs and there's no outputs on this. It actually doesn't really matter. Let's just go ahead and save it as a workflow. So let's browse. Practice exercise one. Just push practice exercise one. Save that. Now, let's submit our solution. Learning about one exercise one general. So just click reply right here. Let's see if we can get this screenshot to work. This didn't work when we did the weekly challenge the other day. I'm a little annoyed by that. Is it Windows Shift S? If you're on a PC, if you're on a Mac, I I got nothing for you. I don't know. Probably Command Shift S or something. Who knows? Next review. Let's go ahead and do a spoiler alert. Let's uh, let's get high speed like we're doing a, a weekly challenge. No spoiler alert. You don't want to cooperate. Mm -hmm. Now it's freezing. These pages aren't responding. Wait. Of course, you're going to freeze up. You're working so well. OK, here we go. Let's cancel that. So we can so we get like five spoiler alerts now. Let's try and put it in the outside. Let's see if we can paste it. Nope. I don't know why it does the most. All right, just browse, just save it. It's a silly thing. Pick mine and downloads. There's me being a goof. Start a file. Pictures of my son. I put it in the drive documents. Anyway, you get it, right? Um, just browse here, upload the document, post it, and they're uh, dorking around with that. But then you're done. Data priority. Since we two days again, let me go ahead and kill the screen. I'm going to learn my lesson for a while. Okay. All done with that. Gonna be a good time. Since we already did the first segment, I'm going to attack a weekly challenge. I will put as a scheduled event for Thursday evening. I expect everyone to be that took an hour. Videos were at 90 minutes per day. And a lot of that or listening to me heavily, you should be able to knock this out in two days. The weekly challenge should take so for three days, that's a pretty hour and a half per day. You're doing well. Now it is day five, day seven, we'll do the weekly challenge, and day eight, and cleansing data. And that's where we are tool palettes and different capabilities to really be able to do some we're just cleaning up the data set is all we're doing. Bring down the data into a manageable form, simple things. We're doing some math steps there. But once we get into combining and cleansing, we are, what are the tools? Unique. We're going to union and join. 
Yeah, I mean, you're getting robust all good stuff. Great work today. If you follow along, everyone in the chat. If you have suggestions, I believe the quality is improving. Lighting, I got some. Um, I'm holding off on the. Over here, we have obviously a guy candy on the screen other than myself in 2023. Now, I made kind of short video, but um, made a, a Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, major data, go find me. Um, I'm not as prolific on Instagram as I am on LinkedIn. But I got very excited for the unboxing, and I made a mistake in that video, and I said that I was going to do a follow-on challenge of earning the Tableau Data Analytics Certificate in October. I'm actually traveling during October, so it's going to be real tough for me to keep up content challenges and, and things like that and studying. I'm going to be kind of burning the candle at both ends, you know, traveling all over and, and doing crazy stuff. I need October to rest. I've got a ton of things going on in September. Plus, I just like with 30 day challenges, it just works best with 30 day months. I, there's some symmetry about that that I really enjoy. That's why we're doing LinkedIn hard mode in September. That's why I'm doing this 30 day challenge in September. The next 30 day challenge, I want to do that in November. So give me October to rest and recuperate. We'll be back with a vengeance in November. We'll, we'll be burning through the data analytics cert like Thanksgiving. You'll be, you'll be a genuine Tableau hero. All right. So not October in November. Yeah, October rest. Ease your mind. Bask in the glory, hopefully, of your Altrix core certificate. Or if you take it a little bit behind and you obviously got some time, maybe fail a test, you get that Spark certificate, you can pass those tests in October. Get geared up for November. And we'll, we'll see what's what. All right, than the last time. My video is better, my light's better. What do we do today? Data preparation lack tool. We learned the filter tool, the sort sample combo. Very powerful on that sample tool. It's good. Um, we're going to do combining cleansing data. Union join that one is like that to take the full four days that I have. We're going to take some tests. And so, with a day, I'm working weekly challenges on specific days, and we can do dedicated days to going through really to fill the extra time with is let's review some things that are some sticking points because at the end of that combining and cleansing data topic we are going to take the foundational micro credential and the the first micro core certification the general knowledge no prac apps on either of those all just general knowledge multiple choice questions but can be challenging tests nonetheless and for those of you that get intimidated by tests it can be a bit of a a minor hurdle to get past. So, urge you to get geared up for that. Let's uh, let's learn all these concepts well, folks. If you like this content, please click like on the video. I'm not going to say smash that smash that like button. I think that's corny and lame. Sorry, Luke Bruce, it's lame. Please click the like button. We're a little more distinguished here. Subscribe to the channel. We are closing in on 400 subscribers. That is amazing. And tell me what else you'd like to see. Obviously, we're on Alteryx. We're talking about doing Tableau, planning on doing Tableau at this point. We'll see how popular this is and how many upvotes and likes and all that other good metrics that I get as far as doing Tableau. But uh, tell me what other content you'd like to see, because if these 30-day challenges are popular, I'd love to keep going with them. They're helping me. This reinforces my learning, and you know, I'm, I'm mediocre at Tableau. I'd like to get better. So with that, 
Click like, subscribe, and all I'll leave you with is follow me, folks, and I'll make you a genuine Alteryx hero just like me.